one of the most um, profound aspects of architecture uh, is, is its idea to impact your energetic field, right? It can do this through uh, what in the Eastern world they know as feng shui. Over here, we call it uh, basically earth energy, kundalini, um, that which the, the practicer of geomancy works with, right? The earth energy. Um, so we'll get more into how it correlates with kundalini uh, later on in this video. But basically, the shape at which these architectural designs that you pass through or, or remain in, um, the shape at which they're in can affect the shape at which your energetic signature is uh, molding to. And these different shapes are basically different dimensions you tap into, right? Uh, be it a six-pointed shape, a five-pointed shape, um, a vesica Pisces, all of these shapes have their own meaning and impact your body and in turn your emotions and states of consciousness in different ways. And this was all steered uh, intentionally by the original Masons. When we look at the word cathedral, we can right off the bat see correlations, of course, as you may know, with the word uh, cathode, right? Um, what cath really means as a root word is something that is, um, it means down or through, or in some cases, both down and through. So when you're, once again, you're looking at earth energy moving down and through, right? That's what these cathedrals, cathedrals are channeling. Now, cath can also be found uh, in the, uh, the word or name Cathar and Catholic, right? So um, this this is a whole nother rabbit hole when you talk about the downward energy uh, or the feminine energy that has been uh, overshadowed in spiritual practices by uh, the, the uprising Kundalini. Ideally, energy is flowing both up and down simultaneously uh, in equilibrium, creating uh, a circuit, if you will. That way it's not getting trapped uh, in any one place and creating uh, inflammation, be it literal inflammation or uh, strictly metaphorical inflammation, like uh, a built-up acoustic sound pocket due to architecture uh, where, you know, which, like where sound might get stuck in a cathedral and dampen out from the resonance or reverberating, right? So there are certain sound pockets. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're building faulty architecture, that will actually uh, take away from a room's um, harmonics of reverberation. So one thing when you get into the cathedrals, uh, one thing that should be mentioned equally with the architecture is the uh, the sound how it was strongly built to house a certain uh, certain harmonic or, or chord of sound so back to the word cath um, in phonetics you can interchange all vowels right and you can also switch out certain letters like c and g uh, if you pronounce each uh, sound of each letter, right, the, uh, the sound of C and G, you'll, you'll feel that uh, phonetically they're very related, right? When you pronounce them, your tongue does pretty much the same thing. It's just one little nuance that uh, switches you from making a C sound to a G sound. So given the fact that you can switch C and G and you can also interchange vowels in phonetics. Uh, you can actually turn the word cath, as in cathedral, uh, into the word goth, right? And this is where you get, uh, of course, the word gothic, the gothic style cathedrals. And gothic generally meant uh, knowledge, right? So if we look at Catholic, Catholic too means uh, knowledge. So, um, this energy, due to it being the descending energy, 
is uh, in an alchemical sense related to the concept of demons, right? The fallen light, the light or the energy that is manifesting into the material world. Not necessarily an evil, so to speak, but uh, more so the other component of that which is rising, right? And over history, this, this aspect has been uh, dichotomized and demonized, uh, be it through our own dualistic views or the propaganda that the, uh, the, we'll just say, power structures at the time were looking to push to get people to uh, basically split themselves in half throughout their own perception. So, you know, when we, the, uh, the old Roman adage, right, of divide and conquer. So, that's basically what it is in, in terms of uh, why we casted out whole concepts and polarized uh, much of our language. So, in the word goth, right, phonetically, you can also see the similarity with the, uh, the word goat. Um, of course, implying, once again, Baphomet. Uh, the, the downward pentagram symbolism, uh, once again, resembling uh, Earth manifestation energy and uh, how Baphomet uh, correlates with that symbol. And, uh, you know, of course, was labeled as a demon, right? A demon or a descending energy. So back to the idea that goth means knowledge. Um, the word demon actually came from the word daemon, which means guardian or knowledge or guardian of the knowledge, right? So Baphomet, right, the goat, the uh, alchemical solvent coagula implication, um, and, and the list goes on. Definitely a, a concept worth looking into if you have yet to. Um, because, you know, many people have yet to. It's, it's basically what we know of at, uh, in our dualistic society as the devil, right? But uh, once again, you know, what does demon mean? Guardian and knowledge. Uh, and there's an initiation there when we start seeing through the, uh, the, the duality or the illusion of division. Along with the goat, you also get uh, Gayatsu, a Masonic name meaning Grand Architect of the Universe. So we'll just end this whole word breakdown for now off there because it brings it full circle back to uh, masonry and back to the, the idea of architecture, right? Uh, an energy that is the grand architect of the universe. So now, one key breakdown of the word Masonic, or Masan. Ma, of course, is the earth energy, right? The feminine. Um, and San, or Sonic, both mean sound. So when you put the two together, you get Masonic, the sound of the earth. Uh, the Schumann resonance might come to some of your minds, and rightfully so, because there are actually many uh, Masonic or stone workings, uh, Masonic structures that um, that facilitate and actually store or house the wavelengths of the Earth's harmonics, right? Be it the Schumann resonance or or uh, the the 9.6 frequency of the magnetic field, and so on and so on. Okay, so pardon the long introduction there. We're just going to jump now right into the, the um, functionality and uh, the energy of these cathedrals and how they were intentionally built to, um, to create energy in a certain sense or to, to channel it more so and have it flow in a certain way. So the first aspect of a cathedral is of course the entrance, right? That which you first step into the experience through. Um, the entrance traditionally is at the west end because it causes you to walk into the cathedral or to uh, come into the depth of the experience of this dimension while you're heading towards the east or towards the rising sun to your liberation. Also, walking towards the east uh, 
causes you to walk with the spin of the earth instead of walking um, against the spin of the earth. So this this brings down instantly. Uh, this optimally is the direction that instantly brings down your your resistance energy, right? So you open yourself up to the experience most optimally while walking from the west to the east. In many ancient traditions all around the world, it's actually uh, recommended for people to, you know, they, they, they uh, say it's best to sleep with your head facing the east, uh, just due to feng shui energy, right? Uh, and also how it can cause you to ride upon certain uh, wavelengths or uh, waves, if you will, uh, you know, to experience certain dream states. The entrance of the cathedral uh, traditionally comes with a vesica Pisces shaped arch over the door. And the vesica is of course um, the energetic signature. Now once again, you know, before I carry on here, these energetic signatures are facilitated by the architectural shapes in this sense. So when you walk through the vesica Pisces, it symbolizes the essentially the vaginal shaped opening into a different world right the birth or the rebirth into a new experience or literally into new dimensions right height length width the contract right the spatial contract of uh being in a closed place literally does uh it's 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 like a mental contract to a certain confinement of limitation right you have your walls your your ground and your ceiling right this is the contract to being in a new dimension now optimally this new dimension is going to have architecture that facilitates your natural field and typically people are used to linear squares boxes cubicles houses with you know just linear cubed or semi-cubed rooms right rectangular rooms so you know uh, a lot of this when this stuff comes back into this the forefront of our minds and we start re-implementing this into our society much like changing the musical tuning it's going to be one of those backbone factors that really helps us shift into a, a deeper degree of harmony as a unified uh, species. So you step through the vesica shape, right? You're essentially born into the cathedral. You have come in through the, the, root, the root chakra level, right? The base chakra. And uh, each, each step does align with, uh, with the chakra, and we'll get into that as well. So now, next you make your way up through the aisle, right, which is technically called the, uh, the nave, right? It's, it's the, the long walkway with these uh, fantastic arches that are right above your head, right? And the nave is actually the navel, right? Uh, L is a root word uh, that usually means... Uh, a, a degree of divinity, you could say God, or the angels, right? Angel, Uriel, Michael. From there, you work your way up through the upper nave, right? The, the kind of, uh, I don't want to say redundant, but it, it's, it's not really its own area in terms of uh, cathedral terminology, but um, it's the solar plexus, right? So usually you go through the nave and then you have the upper nave which we'll just say does align with the solar plexus and then you get to the center point or the heart of the cathedral which is called the uh, the crossing and each cathedral was shaped like a cross right a christian cross or if you're aware of the uh, the rosicrucian symbol of their kind of cross it's it's very much that uh that ratio of height to width as far as how far up they put the transept so you have the crossing in the middle and this is the heart right above this heart is was typically a tower um and we'll get more into that when we talk about the spire um but 
on the left and right side of the the, uh, the crossing, you have the the sideways running hall, right? And this is called the transept. So this is where you're at the cross of the cathedral, right? You have a hall that runs to your front and back, and one that runs to your left and right, right? So this is essentially a uh, a uh, horizontal nave in a sense and this resembles you know in a sense the shoulders or the arms of the cathedral now when you look at the word transept um, trans usually means or tran to uh, switch over and sept uh, implies seven which you might think of as the seven chakras of the kundalini right sept also uh, is a phonetic root in the word serpent which implies kundalini and if we look at the word scepter we see that it implies a basically a staff so if you look at you know the sept scepter uh the serpent the seven you see the whole idea of kundalini you know the kundalini rising up the staff up the seven chakras right um sept implying all those so that whole idea so transept is to um, to switch over or to, in this case, through resonance, oscillate the sept, the energy of the seven, the, the kundalini energy. Once again, that being the earth energy or the feng shui conduit. So throughout this sideways uh, hallway or the cross of the cathedral, you have the the oscillation left and right left and right of the kundalini energy or the earth energy that has been built up within the cathedral right so this is like the the part that's uh, basically like a capacitor though you could technically say the whole cathedral is this part is implying you know the the oscillation from left to right and uh, if you're facing east which traditionally you are in the church the left and right oscillation can actually affect uh, your brainwave states, right? And, and uh, put you in different states of consciousness. And of course, quite uh, fitting for the choir room to be right at the throat of this cathedral, right? Uh, of course, we, you know, the voice box of the cathedral, uh, um, the, the throat chakra area this is the communication kind of uh that echoes out and resonates right it's like the the uh, choir room to the cathedral is like our vocalization of ohm to our body essentially then you move up to the sixth chakra uh you know in uh, vedic terms ajna chakra right the third eye chakra and this right here is, um, it's right at the altar, right? The main altar of the cathedral or church. Altar is a root word in the word, you know, alternate. So to switch something left and right, right? Once again, this is the oscillation of the third eye or the brain center, you know, the left and right uh, brainwave pattern of the cathedral, right? So you find this in the transept of the left and right and you find alter the word alter implying a left and right energy as well or to alter um from from one polarity to the other now if you look at the uh the chakra system with the lotuses the ajna or sixth chakra where the altar is located uh actually has two petals one on the left one on the right and the church uh actually has this kind of gemini um, mirroring effect, you know, the left and the right, just like the human body does. And the altar is, of course, you know, where the uh, the whole uh, message of the the mass is uh, really emitting from. Much like how you know the cores or the the pineal gland in our brain is really what's running the show in our cerebral uh, part of our body, right? And then last but not least, you have the apse. And this is basically the semicircle 
or the uh, the dome shape that's kind of covering uh, up along the back wall, the east wall, and along the top of where the altar is. You know, this back story, or this back uh, corner or uh, side, excuse me, usually tells a story right through its depiction through whether it be stained glass window depictions or uh, statues or whatnot this is this is where a lot of the uh, symbolism is kind of uh, at its pinnacle much like the crown chakra is the uh, the top or the pinnacle of uh, the chakra system or the uh, body or of course in this case the cathedral now there are so many other parts of a cathedral, you know, I'm not going to say that this is every part, you know, you could get into, uh, you know, the buttress or the different uh, aspects, uh, height wise, width wise, you know, that, that aren't necessarily on this linear part. But one, one last uh, trait of the cathedral I want to talk about is the spire. So. You know, spire comes with an idea of upliftment, right, to inspire. Um, the spire is the top tower, and it's the part also that comes to the point, right? This is the the, uh, the needle, right? Uh, much like the cathode metaphor, you know, with the needle. So, the, the spire as a word, spire, S and pyre, um, it, there is an occult kind of uh, view of the, the letter S. You know, of course, the serpent is both shaped like an S and makes the sound S when it, when it vocalizes. So we can break this word spire down into S and pyre. P-I-R-E also being uh, P-Y-R-E or uh, pyro meaning fire. So the S and the fire or the serpent fire, right? Um, I think it was Earth, Wind and Fire that uh, came out with the song Serpentine Fire. Uh, we could imagine that's probably alluding either uh, consciously or in their subconscious through artistry as the, uh, the Kundalini. So the serpentine fire, the fire that's risen up the spine. The spire uh, channeled the serpent fire, right? Uh, the the buildup that was oscillating in the transept or the cross section. It, it's it's actually right once again, as I mentioned before, it's right above that uh, cross section. So at the at the very center of the cross uh, comes up this tower with the spire, right? This is the uh, the channeling of the the buildup of, uh, be it chants, prayers, meditations, uh, you know, sound, and of course the light, the light through the stained glass windows. And the stained glass windows is one that I, uh, I kind of want to do like a separate video on, maybe a nice little short video kind of describing uh, its association with the word grail. Um, because you know there there's a form of glass and actually uh, originally a whole practice of glass that was called uh, graal g r a a l which is the same spelling of grail in some terms so uh, the stained glass or the rose windows once again you know uh, we hint at that group the rose of Crucian, right with the rose uh, the rose windows and their rosicrucian cross being the shape of the cathedrals. Now, they formed as a group um, later than when a lot of these cathedrals were actually structured, but in a sense, you could say they were around anyways, because they're, they're, they're a continuation, uh, essentially through uh, Templarism and through Freemasonry uh, of, of these divine works, this alchemy, this stone masonry, these prophecies through astrology and uh, so on and so forth. So you know these these cathedrals or pyramids or temples they they are external workings of the original Stargate, which is which is your body, which is the you know the the vessel of the perceiver. In the Bible, it mentions how um, you know the house of the the Lord or the the temple. 
uh, was not built with human hands, right? So that implies our own body, right? No, no human uh, used their hands to to mold this, right? You know, so so these these external structures were molded by hand. They are in 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 a sense uh, graven images. And this is where uh, some might kind of fall to the wayside of looking into this stuff, you know, um, due to maybe religious views or what have you. But, um, you know, there's an old alchemical saying, I'm sure you've heard of it, as above, so below. And the other half to that is as within, so without. So, you know, um, if we look at it through that lens, uh, it's, it's a principle of concept when we look at mirroring uh, things that are within uh, outside of ourselves, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, if we're the blueprint, uh, then we are the uh, the one Swiss Army knife, so to speak, of a uh, you know the do it all in one type of blueprint shape that um, that something would be structured off of in order to operate most optimally. <laughs>